Well, the most important word really is uh, probably concept. The others are modifiers. Now, it involves the flow of money. It involves the warehousing of money. And it involves the fact that uh, the stuff must flow and uh, it goes in and flows out to do whatever we want to in life. I wanted to begin with part one of becoming your own banker. You mentioned in part one that banking is the most important business in the world and that without it, all business comes to a screeching halt. Can you expand on that? Well, in this very room uh, here a few years ago, uh, we uh, were filming and the uh, end product was uh, banking with life which we all know about. Uh, the third party, I believe, that is uh, in the video is Dr. Paul Cleveland, uh, Austrian economist at Birmingham Southern. And uh, Paul says that um, money is not wealth. Wealth is goods and services. Money is a medium of exchange whereby we acquire uh, real wealth, uh, services, and uh, goods. And so uh, that medium of exchange there is universal in some form or another all over the world. And so uh, that is critical that we understand it. But unfortunately, it's really not understood all that much. Why would you say that is? Is it because of the mindset that predominates most of the world today? True. Yeah. It's, it's a mindset problem more than anything else. So Nelson, we know that everyone who utilizes money is familiar with the process of banking, but yet so few people control the function as it relates to their needs. How important is it for someone who's reading the book in part one to gain that initial understanding of the premise of why you wrote the book, Becoming Your Own Banker? They've got to come face to face with the fact that their assumptions in all probability are wrong. Uh, that's the biggest thing. It's almost as as if people are sleepwalking is what it amounts to. Yeah. As far as getting into the un real understanding of what's happening and who in the play, uh, it's not there. Uh, and it's mostly because of erroneous assumptions. And people have been, in our experience, have been led to believe that, you know, commercial banks are a trustworthy place to warehouse money mm -hmm. and through your writing the book, Becoming Your Own Banker, we understand that there's a different way to gain control of our money. Is that right? Absolutely, yes. The banking function should be at the you and me level totally, but it has been totally captured by the bankers. And uh, what really goes on in the uh, deepest levels of uh, banking out there is, uh, it's not a very pretty picture at all. Uh, it's borders on criminality. Uh, anybody that would lend money that doesn't exist, uh, that's not a very good person, but that is what's happening today. I think that one of the most important questions in part one of becoming your own banker to ask yourself is how much of the banking function do you control as it relates to your needs? Yeah, it should be 100%. It can be. There are lots of folks out there that are in this condition. They'll never see a bank again in their life. And so this book essentially is all about how to create your own banking system so that you can control 100% of the function as it relates to your needs. Yeah. But you've shared with us many times that it doesn't happen overnight. Oh, no. Oh, no. And uh, there are lots of people out there that will never catch on. Uh, there are people with, with degrees that uh, they have no desire uh, in this direction at all. And you cannot force feed them it at all. It's impossible. They gotta wanna. There has to be a motivation there yes. and, and a desire. <laughs> in essence, infinite banking concept is ridiculously simple, but it's complicated by the fact of the uh, mindset that the general public has. They think that this is, can't be true because it, it is so simple that uh, it's got to be complicated of some kind. And the, the forces out there that cause all this sort of stuff deliberately make it that way. Uh, 
They intimidate you is what it amounts to. Well, you got to realize what evil looks like. And that is evil that's going on out there. Uh, don't participate, that's all. Uh, you got to learn to secede from the way that the world thinks is what this amounts to. And when you do, you create a microcosm that's all yours. You've created an aquarium. Hence why it's important, as you've said, to have a good coach. That's absolutely necessity because uh, people listen to what the world has to say so very much. For instance, uh, there's a radiologist up in Coleman, Alabama, about 45 miles north of here, who is coming along very well with what I was teaching back when I first put this together. He was among the, the very first that I introduced this concept to. But every time that I went to a review with him, his first question, who else is doing this? I can't find anybody out there that uh, corroborates what you're teaching. Am I the Lone Ranger? Well, so, well I said, uh, well, what if you are? You're doing it right. They're doing it wrong. You ought to be proud. Well, he stuck with it. Uh, and by the time he retired, he had more than doubled his uh, uh, usual premiums. And now he sings my praises, but uh, that was the hardest thing I had to do was uh, try to keep him between the ditches uh, of listening to the uh, nonsense that's going on. And I want to discuss uh, imagination. You focus on imagination as being a really important core aspect for someone to be able to implement infinite banking and that yes. it, it ties back into how we think and that the creative... Uh, being able to stir creativity of the mind is really important for implementation of infinite banking. Can you speak to that? Sure. Uh, Einstein said the imagination was more important than knowledge or ability. And I totally concur. During the time I was in the Air Force for two years, I was an aerial photo interpreter. All right, you can learn all kind of things from aerial photos that you wouldn't uh, really think about at all. Uh, but uh, in finding people who were candidates for uh, this particular specialty, the number one uh, ingredient was imagination. Well, think of this. Uh, uh, what about the genius of Disney, huh? Yes. Uh, that's imagination, isn't it? The imagination comes first with so much out there. You had the job of putting your finger on what this thing was that you had, that was born out of your life circumstance and out of your mind. And you had to come up with a name for this idea. And you decided to call it the infinite banking concept for a reason. Can you tell us why that is? How imagination ties to infinite? Well, the most important word really is uh, probably concept. Uh, the others are modifiers. Now, uh, it involves the flow of money. It involves the warehousing of money and it involves the fact that uh, the stuff must flow and uh, it goes in and flows out to do whatever we want to in life. But uh, the more you see again, the more you see you didn't see. And so that's the reason for the word infinite. Uh, how do you describe infinite? You can't. When you define something, you put limits on something. Hmm. Well, there's no way you can put limits on this. See, the idea that the banking function should be totally controlled at the ind individual level is a totally foreign idea to 99.9% .9 of the world. But it's true. But again, the common denominator is uh, the control of the money. That in this hostile atmosphere that we have, uh, environment that we have, uh, you can prosper very well and live a very peaceful, uh, stress-free life again, uh, simply by obeying this concept. Because life is so simple when you don't mess with the bankers. Uh, you, you talked about the other terms of infinite banking concept being modifiers. Yeah. And you've said that nobody owns the word bank or banking. 
No. But yet some people in, in, in certain institutions seem to feel that they have ownership over those oh, words. Oh, yes, absolutely. That, that, that is their uh, uh, personal property. Well, back in my forestry days in eastern North Carolina, uh, there was something called a soil bank. Uh, there was overproduction of stuff, and these brilliant people in Washington, D.C. decided that the best thing to do would be to curtail production, so we'd, uh, we'd pay you to not grow something. <laughs> and so that was called a soil bank. Well, are you going to sue the federal government because they use the word bank? <laughs> All right. Now, uh, our uh, church uh, had a food bank. Uh, for people who uh, needed charitable contributions of foodstuffs and so forth. We're going to sue them. Uh, my wife uh, used to give blood regularly. Uh, guess where she went? The blood bank. Uh, we're going to sue them also. But the craziest things happen out there. But... Uh, I've had all kind of feedback from home offices or life insurance companies because of the word bank. And they can't think that thing through at all. And uh, that really bothers me. But, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, stands out like a sore thumb, uh, let's use a parallel, okay? Back when my children were young, I had a trusted agreement, uh, a trust with the First National Bank here in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. I am so glad I li outlived that trust because a trust is no better than a trustee. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I've found is that uh, the guy that's running the trust department of a bank, is that's a pass-through job. Mm -hmm. He might be there four or five years and that's it. Well, same sort of thing happens out there in corporations big time. How many years is somebody actually in office? Mm -hmm. So uh, they just kind of slough this sort of thing off. Uh, and, uh, oh, you can't use that word bank because that belongs to the bankers. <laughs> and that's not so at all. <laughs> that's been, that's life. Well, and using, you know, the term of a bank or banking, banking is an action yes. step. Yes. And so when you talk about the function of banking and controlling it at the you and me level, you're really referencing being able to harness the transactional aspect of how we integrate money in our day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. Does that yeah. be a fair assessment? Yeah. Coming up with the name infinite banking concept and you shared that you feel at this stage that concepts, you know, concept is the most important word. Can you just, you know, dig a little deeper into that as to why you think that's so critical? Do you follow automobiles? When I'm driving behind them, yes. Yeah, but, but do you observe what goes on in the automobile business? No? No. Well, for your information, uh, they come up with concept cars from time to time. This is what a car should look like, what not. This is what they're going to look like in the future, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, remember those things back there years ago with tail fins? <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. <well. laughs> and then, uh, cars so long that the banana boats, I guess, is the best way to describe them. So what the concept, yeah. You said before, too, that, you know, in retrospect, you, you know, maybe you should have flipped it around and had it concept yeah. infinite banking. Can you speak to that? Yeah, well, you know, that's the way the Spanish do things. Like uh, uh, we say hot water in Canada and USA, but in uh, Mexico and uh, Spain, they say uh, agua caliente, yeah, water hot. <laughs> uh, the modifier comes afterwards. Uh, we do the modifier in front. But uh, I'm just trying to get people off the uh, prejudice they have against the word bank and, and why that prevails. And I don't think it has all that much basis out there for anything except that uh, here's some person in a home office of an insurance company latches onto that and other folks just parrot it. And uh, they, they take that as, quote, this is just the way it is. But it's not. They haven't thought that thing through at all. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, I say, uh, concentrate on the fact that this is a concept. This is a way to look at things here. And it's not the way that people usually look at things.